Hello, welcome to the another module in this massive open online course on principles of CDMA, MIMO, OFDM wireless communication systems. So in the previous modules we have seen, we have characterized the performance of a wireless communication system and we have noticed that the bit error rate performance of a wireless communication system is very poor. In particular, the bit error rate of a wireless communication system decreases only as 1 over SNR, right? While the bit error rate in a wire line system decreases exponentially e to the power of minus half SNR, the bit error rate of a wire line communication system decreases only as 1 over SNR. Are. And therefore, what we want to do in today's module is we want to intuitively understand the reason behind this poor performance of the wireless communication system. So what we want to do today is we would like to basically understand, uh, perform an analysis or intuitively understand the reason behind this poor performance of the wireless communication system. And we will notice that the reason that uh, this poor performance arises is because of the deep fade events, because of the deep fade nature of the wireless communication channel. So what we are going to do today is we are going to do a deep fade analysis a deep fade analysis of we are going to do a deep fade analysis of wireless communication. In particular, we would like to understand why is the performance of a wireless communication system poor? Why is the performance of a wireless Why is the performance of our wireless communication system, why is the performance of the wireless communication system poor and this can be explained on the basis of the deep fade nature of the deep fade, uh, deep fade events in the wireless, in the fading nature of the wireless communication channel. So this can be explained or can be explained. based on the deep fade events in this can be explained on the basis of deep fade events. The key here is to realize the deep fade event in the which occur in the fading nature in the fading process of the wireless channel. And just to remind you briefly about the concept of deep fade, we said that the wireless channel is a fading channel, we said that the wireless channel is fading in nature, correct? Which means our wireless channel amplitude is varying. And at a certain point, the wireless channel is, there is a drastic, this is the fading nature of the wireless channel. So if you look at this, this is the, this is my fading wireless channel. And there is a, here at this point, there is a drastic decrease in the strength or there is a drastic dip in the strength or amplitude right there is a, at some point there is a drastic dip in the strength or the amplitude of the wireless channel and this basically this is basically our deep feed and when this occurs we call this our deep fade event. This is basically our deep fade event, right? And this, what we want to understand is what is the impact of this deep fade? How does this impact or how does deep fade impact? 
respect wireless communication. So, what we are saying is there is a fading nature of the wireless channel and at certain points at some instance that amplitude or the received power or the gain of the wireless channel dips significantly. And when this significant dip occurs we call that a deep fade event and what we would like to understand is precisely how does how does this deep fade event or how do such deep fade events or what is the impact of these deep fade events on the uh, on the performance of the wireless communication system. And we are going to see that these deep fade events, they have a very significant and a profound impact on the performance of the wireless communication system, all right. So, what we would like to do is first we would like to model the deep fade event. So, consider our fading wireless channel model. So, consider or fading channel model which is basically given as y equals I hope everyone remembers this, this is y equals h x plus n where y is the received symbol, r x is the notation for the receiver, n is the Gaussian noise. In fact, white Gaussian noise of variance or power sigma square my h h equals a e to the power of j phi is the fading coefficient or fading channel coefficient and x is the transmitted my x is the x is the transmitted symbol and therefore, the transmitted symbol has power, the power of the transmitted symbol is p. Therefore, we already said that the received power, therefore received power equals, because remember the transmitted symbol x is multiplied by the fading channel coefficient h, therefore the transmit power p is multiplied by the square of the amplitude of the fading channel coefficient. Therefore, the received power is the transmit power p times magnitude h square which is basically a square. So, that received power is equal to p transmitted power times magnitude of h square which is basically p times a square or which is equal to a square times p. And the noise power we have already seen the noise power equals sigma square. So, noise power the noise power equals sigma square and when can we say this communication system is a deep fade? The performance of the communication is system is very poor when the received power is less than the noise power because the received signal is below the noise threshold then obviously, you cannot detect the signal or you cannot differentiate the signal from the noise. Right. So, the performance, so the system is in a deep fade if signal power is lower, signal power is lower than the is lower than the signal power is lower than the noise threshold which means that when my received power is less than the noise power which is sigma square which means to say that a square p is less than sigma square and this basically corresponds to this event corresponds to our deep fade. What is the meaning of deep fade? When do we say that the channel is in a deep fade? We say that the channel is in a deep fade if the channel strength dips so much that we are not able to receive any meaningful signal power. 
that is the received signal power is much lower than is lower than the noise threshold therefore, I cannot distinguish the signal from the noise. So, in that scenario we say that the channel is in deep fade which corresponds <coughs> to the criterion that the received signal power A square P is less than the noise power that is sigma square. So, this is our deep fade event and now if I simplify this further I have A square P less than sigma square which implies A square less than sigma square by P, but remember sigma P over sigma square equals S n R. So, sigma square over P equals 1 over S n R. So, this implies A square is less than 1 over S n R or A is less than 1 over square root of S n R. So, my deep fade criteria, so fading coefficient is so poor that A is less than 1 over square root of S n R. So, fading co if the, when the fading coefficient A amplitude of the fading coefficient A is less than 1 over square root of S n R, we the received signal power is less than the noise threshold and therefore, we say that the channel is in a deep fade. So, our deep fade condition in terms of S n R, so deep fade occurs or deep fade, our deep fade occurs when A is less than 1 over square root of S n R. So, this is basically our condition for the deep fade. And now therefore, we can ask at this point now therefore, one can ask, one can naturally ask what is the probability of deep fade. So, we have identified the condition for a deep fade. Now, can one can ask what is the associated probability of deep fade. What is the probability of this deep fade? Well, the probability of the deep fade which I am denoting by P of d f, this is the probability of deep fade. This is equal to the probability that A is less than 1 over square root of S n R. So, the probability of deep fade P d f is the probability that A the amplitude of the channel coefficient h is less than square root of 1 over S n R. And let us now calculate what this probability is. So, P d f which is the probability of deep fade equals the probability that A is less than 1 over square root of S n R and this we already said this is our probability of this is our probability of deep fade. Now, the probability that A is less than 1 over square root of S n R is the distribution of A distribution of the random variable A integrated from 0 to 1 over square root of S n R. That is if I want to find the probability that the fading channel coefficient A lies between 0 and 1 over square root of S n R, I have to integrate the distribution between the limits 0 to 1 over square root of S n R. And remember our channel is a Rayleigh fading channel therefore, f of A the distribution is 2 A e to the power of minus A square. Therefore, the probability is given by the integral between the limit 0 to 1 over square root of S n R to A e to the power of minus A square d A, where this is our Rayleigh fading density. This is our Rayleigh density. And now, you can see this integral 2 A e to the power of minus A square equals minus E of minus A square evaluated by between the limits 0 to 1 over square root of S n R which is basically equal to 1 minus e raise to minus 1 over S n R. So, this is basically equal to, so the probability of deep fade P d f equals, so the probability of a deep fade, the probability that the deep fade occurs equals 1 minus e raise to minus 1 over S n R. 
Now, this is the exact expression, however, we can simplify it further at high S n r using the following property. If x is approximately equal to 0, that is if x is close to 0, then we have e to the power of minus x equals or is approximately can be approximated as 1 minus 1 minus x e to the power of minus x is approximately 1 minus x. Therefore, my probability of deep fade is approximately 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 over S n r at high S n r. Because you can see from this expression when S n r is high, 1 over S n r is very small and we are using the relation 1 minus e power minus x, uh, we are using the relation e power minus x is approximately equal to 1 minus x when x is very small and therefore, I have 1 minus e raise to minus 1 over S n r is approximately equal to 1 minus 1 minus 1 over S n r which can now be simplified as the 1's cancel which can now be simplified as 1 over S n r and this is really the key. Now, if you can look at this what you can see is very interestingly the probability of deep fade is equal to 1 over S n r is approximately equal to 1 over at high S n r the probability of deep fade is approximately equal to 1 over S n r. This is this quantity here this is my probability of deep fade. this is my probability of deep fade at, at high S n r which is proportional to 1 over S n r. And then what you can see is from the previous result you can see that the bit error rate is proportional to 1 over twice S n r or basically proportional to 1 over S n r, but 1 over S n r is the probability of deep fade. Therefore, what we can see here is essentially that my bit error rate which is equal to 1 over twice S n r is basically proportional to 1 over S n r which is equal to the probability of deep fade and that is essentially the most important result which basically tells us that the bit error rate of a wireless communication system is proportional to PDF, where PDF is the probability of the deep fade and this is the key result. Because the probability what you are say what you are seeing is the bit error rate is proportional to the probability of deep fade that is the bit error rate. is proportional to probability of deep fade and this basically captures the property of the very important property that the bit error rate the high bit error the bit error rate is proportional to the probability of deep fade and the high bit error rate that you observe in the wireless communication system arises due to the deep fade due to the frequently occurring due to the deep fade events in the fading nature of the wireless channel. So, the poor performance of the wireless communication system. So, the poor performance poor performance of wireless channel arises from the deep fade. And in turn we have said that deep fade events occur because of the strong destructive interference when these multipath uh, multiple signal copies from this multipath propagation environment interfere with each other and they cancel that results in a deep fade the strong destructive interference. So, we have already said the destructive interference the destructive interference gives rise to the to the destructive interference in the wireless uh, communication system or the destructive interference of the wireless channel gives rise to the gives rise to the 
deep fade and that is what significantly impacts the bitter rate. In fact, that results in a significant increase in the bitter rate of the wireless uh, communication system and that is that is the reason. So, the deep fade events have a profound impact on the performance of a wireless communication system in that they significantly degrade the performance of the wireless communication system. And therefore, now we have to understand what are the techniques, how can we combat this fading or how can we overcome this disastrous effect of this fading or this deep fade events in the wireless communication channel or the wireless communication system to improve the performance of the wireless communication system. So, what we are going to look at now is we would like to we would like to improve improve performance we would like to improve performance by basically overcoming avoiding deep fades or reducing the frequency avoiding deep fades that is avoiding deep fades or overcoming the deep fades or overcome overcome the effect of these deep fade events and how do we do that this is possible through the principle of diversity. This is possible through the principle of diversity. So, what we would like to do is we would like to understand how to overcome this uh, uh, the degrading effect of this poor bitter, the degrading effect of these deep fade events and the answer to that, the key to that lies in this concept called diversity that is diversity is the important principle or is the important property that we will use to overcome the impact of fading and thereby improve the performance of the wireless communication system all right so let us stop this module here and we'll talk more about the properties of diversity or more about uh, this principle of diversity in the subsequent modules thank you very much